Hello, everybody. Chris Profi, Music Obsessed. And as you can see, I've got my good friend here, Jeff Witcher from Vinyl Destination. I always forget to say Vinyl Destination after your name. Yeah, it's all right. I forget to say, I, you know, the, the number of times I've actually referenced it on my channel, you know, I could probably count on one hand. So, yeah, you're just, you're just Jeff Witcher. We, we know who Jeff Witcher is. I'm, I'm larger. I'm larger than my uh, channel name. <laughs> yeah, but technically it's Jeff Witcher Vinyl Destination. So um, here we are tonight. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss what we feel are our top 10 Cure songs. So anybody growing up in the 80s, you remember The Cure, whether you like them or you don't like them, or maybe you only like the song Friday I'm in Love, whatever it is, you know who The Cure is. So Jeff and I, you know, we talk on the side and we've uh, realized that we're both big Cure fans as well as, you know, we also like Depeche Mode and Thompson Twins and sort of a lot of that stuff in that, that era and that vein. But we decided to talk about The Cure tonight. So Jeff, I don't know if you have anything you want to say about The Cure before we start. Or... Yeah, I think that probably um, when I first got into them was in the mid 80s, I think right around uh, the uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me was the first. Uh, album that I ever bought by them and mm -hmm. I put it on um, cassette. Nice. So that was really, and this is a double album. I mean, there's no such thing as double albums really uh, much anymore. Uh, that was my like introduction into The Cure. And then from there, I kind of worked my way backwards. And it's really interesting because, you know, The Cure started out with just kind of tight, real short punk songs uh you know the um well what was in the u.s or north america the boys don't cry album um and then three imaginary boys was the um actual uk uh name of that record so you had kind of you know almost like classic punk type tracks on that and then they started moving away from that and subsequent albums like 17 seconds had some longer compositions and then faith you had some shorter still had that punk edge, but you also had some of that more broody, melancholy, mopey stuff that The Cure would become known for. And then pornography, it was like, okay, we're all in eight songs. They're all gonna be six minutes long. They all sound morose and morbid and just like, almost like, you know, uh, real uh, slow and brooding kind of tracks. And then they went full in on the pop with uh, Let's Go to Bed, and um, they had a, like an EP and a singles compilation, and then had on the door, and then they kind of gradually moved out of the pop phase back to that sound from pornography, which was the slow dirge-like, uh, you know, atmospheric kind of songs uh, with disintegration. So a lot of different phases uh, with The Cure that they've moved in and out of, and I think some people, you know, can pick one certain era that they like more than others, but. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I'm pretty proud of you. You just went through the Cure discography pretty quickly <laughs> in those beginning, beginning years. That was good. I was like, oh, is he going to mention this album? Yeah, he mentioned that album. Is he going to mention? So, but you're right though. I mean, Cure fans, you know, you've got the, the Cure fans who like the happy songs, you know? You've got the fans who like more of the mopey, brooding type stuff. And then you've got some of the early, early Cure fans who like sort of that post-punk, darker sound that they had. So they've got, they've got quite a few different types of fans in their fan base. So it must be tough for a band like that to kind of make everybody happy. It's like, almost, it's like oh, okay, we got to have a radio-friendly song on this record. We got to have some mopey stuff. We got to have some, you know, early post-punk type stuff. So it they're an interesting band yeah i think some of their later albums especially you see that like okay we got to make everybody every cure fan happy on this album so we're going to have a track that sounds like it was off the top we're going to have a track that sounds like it was you know could have been a b-side off disintegration we're gonna have right. a track that you know reminds you of uh, something that would have been on the head on the door you know just right. sort of like they're moving around in all different styles um, but I mean, I always think of like blood flowers is like disintegration part two, yep. uh, reminds me a lot of that, uh, 
uh, that record, but. Yeah. And it's funny you had mentioned uh, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me on cassette. Cause I remember getting that on cassette specifically for my 16th birthday. And uh, yeah, so you and I were kind of along those, that same road. And I remember thinking, damn, there's a lot of songs on this tape. That's one of those, it's one of those albums you can get lost in. Yeah. And even when they put it on CD, like they had to leave off um, Hey yeah. You, uh, yeah. the track on there because it wouldn't fit. I'm like, oh, man, I would have bought like two CDs if you reissued it that way, which eventually they made room for it. It's still the, the right. copy that I have now on CD is the remaster, but they managed to squeeze all the tracks onto one disc. But yeah, I was just looking at my copy too. I, I have the remaster too with Hey You on it as well. So mm -hmm. now why couldn't they, I wonder why they didn't put it on the first edition of it i don't know was it a matter of like now cds can hold more information than before no. um i'm not yeah, sure i'm not sure but interesting so as you guys can see jeff and i uh were we're really into the cure and uh you know we kind of followed along that same that same path growing up so this should be an interesting conversation what we decided to do is we're going to go song by song because we figured there's only two of us, so it shouldn't take us too long to bang through our top 10. So, Jeff, you want to go first? Yeah, so my number 10 is going to be off uh, this album, which is Wild Mood Swings, and it's a song called Jupiter Crash, mm. which I love. It's a, you know, it reminds me of Disintegration, but it's a happier sounding kind of a track that's got kind of Melancholy, but I love the guitar line in this, and it's just it, it, it's a feel good track. It's a you know slower tempo song, but I, I it's everything that I love about the Cure. It's got a great Robert Smith vocal. The band sounds great, and it just puts me in a good mood. It's my favorite track on this CD, which uh, is again one of those uh, albums that they put out where it's like, well, let's have each song appeal to each segment of the curious fan base and but that's okay i, th I think it's a a great album uh, i think it's kind of lost in their catalog i don't hear a whole lot talk about it but um you know nonetheless i still think it's a great album that is a great album that's a great song too i really wanted to pick a song off that album i just couldn't do it though but that that was that song was in the running if, if i was going to choose a song off of that record mm -hmm. i think the problem is that followed wish right yeah yeah so, so wish was huge yeah yeah it was their follow-up to wish but i think at that point um i don't i think there was uh and i don't remember exactly when that came out but i feel like there was a couple of years like there was a pretty good space of time between wish and when uh you know wild mood swings came out right but I, I know there were a couple of singles off it. Like I think Mint Car was a single off of it. Um, well, I was just looking it up on my phone right here. The other song I like off that album is the 13th. Mm -hmm. I think that might've been a single. Yeah, I think Mint Car, the 13th, maybe um, was Strange Attraction. Yeah, Strange Attraction was a great song too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right though. It's one of those albums that kind of gets gets lost, but you're also right with in the fact that um, you know, The Cure was definitely trying to hit on all their fan base with that album. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great song, though. All right. So my number 10, I'm pulling a song off of this album, The Top, which I feel is underrated. This album gets lost a lot, too. I think people, this was one of the last Cure albums that I bought and sort of delved into. And I think a lot of people who are into The Cure don't even realize that this album is out there. Um, and I'm going to pull the song Shake Dog Shake off of here, which is, uh, I believe it's the first song off the album. It's, it's a heavy song. I love the sound of the drums in this song. There are some aggressive vocals by Robert Smith. A lot of times you don't get, you know, such aggressiveness in his vocals, but I, you do with Shake Dog Shake. The guitars are heavy on here. I love the rhythmic chorus of this song. Um, so for an underrated album, I think it opens up with just a kick-ass tune with Shake Dog Shake. Yeah, I love that as an opening. You're right about that being a forgotten album. It's sort of like in excess is the swing album where yeah. people, oh, I didn't know they had that album. But like the Caterpillar, I think was a single off of there. Yeah. Uh, that one I like Bird Mad Girl. Um uh -huh. dressing up Dre is very dressing cool. up, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I almost picked Dressing Up. It's sort of, that song has a, kind of an R&B vibe to it. it uh, it's a cool tune. Yeah, and it's got some weird like reed instrument that um, is sort of carries the melody on that one. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think they were stretching out a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think the Caterpillar was sort of an odd choice for a single because it's so different from, um, you know, anything that The Cure had put out to that point. But I, I think it's great. I think um, Piggy in the Mirror is a cool track also. But yeah, the top great discovery if you've not yet checked that album out. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I don't know why uh, it took me so long to, to discover it, but I don't know one of those lost cure records yeah i remember even when i bought that on cassette i remember seeing it and like how did i miss this one because it was probably one of the at the time you know when i was buying everything after disintegration came out it was one of those um, albums where i was like how did i miss this one i've never heard anything off of this i mean i, yeah. I guess it's entirely true because the caterpillar was on the um standing on a beach right singles compilation but the rest of it I hadn't heard. I didn't even know knew the album existed, but um, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. All right. So we're up to your number nine. Okay. So my number nine is going to be off of. Um, it's hard, even with the glare, like yeah. the cover itself. Is, this is just how the cover looks, but it's a, a forest mm. um, off of here, which has actually had a couple of cover versions. Um, it's that. Uh, iconic of a cure track but uh yeah i always loved it it's just uh yeah kind of moody i love the the, the understated synthesizers on it which kind of carry the melody uh it's just got you know that the, you know, the early cure drumming is very just stick with the beat you know nothing flashy, nothing you know they're not trying to um mix it up too much but i think with the forest it works and it's really that transition from, you know, the concise uh, pop punk of Boys Don't Cry or, you know, Three Imaginary Boys to what would later come out on Faith and Pornography. So, I mean, it bridges it really well. And I, I think it's a cool track. Uh, I love the bass line in it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of that guitar uh, lick that is there that kind of is in the background also um but yeah gotta, gotta put that one on my list i had that on my list too and i had to take it off but it seems to be the theme of this this list so far yeah i had that on my um what i like about the early cure too is that it's i think you might have mentioned that you might have used this word but sparse arrangements um you know you think about an album like disintegration that is just there's so much going on it's just such a beefy sound layers upon layers of vocals and guitar and uh you know keyboards and bass and everything and then you know you listen to some of those early songs um the, like the forest as example it's just it's kind of a cool difference with hearing that sparse arrangement mm -hmm. so yeah, and i you know for their first four albums they were a trio I mean, they were like some, you know, ensemble there and they started to, you know, incorporate more textures and that with Faith, which was their next album. And I, I think Faith is really where they kind of settled on their sound. And this mm -hmm. is who we are. And this is, you know, what we're going to uh, sound like going forward. But yeah, very, very sparse uh, instrumentation, pretty much, you know, like the, the classic Ono band where you just had the guitar, bass, drums. Yeah. Maybe support here and there, but nothing that was gonna, you know, overpower the song. Yeah, and I don't think people realize anybody who's like into just like Friday I'm in love or you know, tunes like that, they don't realize that the cure started off, like you had said, basically kind of punk, kind of post-punk, uh, in that in that sort of vein. So and it's a it's yeah. an interesting sound. Mm -hmm. All right. So my number nine, you had mentioned blood flowers. And uh, I agree with you. This is almost like Disintegration Part 2. And um, it's funny. I was looking this album up. I guess when it came out, it got mixed reviews, which I think is kind of funny because I think in time, it's become really a strong Cure record. And 
people who are Cure fans go back to this and go, yeah, you know, this is a great album. And I'm going to pick the song Maybe Someday off of here. And uh, I just love, they, there's this guitar melody in it and it follows the vocals and it sounds like it could have just, they could have put it in the album Disintegration and it would have fit, you know? Um, Robert Smith is just, he's in the pocket with these vocals. It just sounds perfect. Um, and I guess I was reading up on it. There were no official singles released from this record, um, which I find interesting because there's a lot of good stuff on here. And maybe someday could have been a great single. Maybe this album would have sold more. Maybe it would have had a little bit more, uh, you know, recognition with some, with some singles that were released. But, you know, I had to pick a tune off of here and I'm going maybe someday. Yeah, it's one of those albums you have to sit with. You know, yeah. you might look the first way through and think, well, you know, that was cool enough. But, you know, if you spend time with it and you actually concentrate on what you're listening to, you know, it's not something you can, I mean, you can, but it's not something you usually would just kind of throw on and have in the background. I mean, it's something that really commands that you yeah. spend some time with it if you're going to appreciate it. But yeah, I love it for all the reasons why I like disintegration. Um, it's a cure stretching out. It's got Robert Plant's great vocals, and um, you know, you know, you got the band creating all those interesting sonic textures, also. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's one of those. It's like God. Why don't people talk about this record more? Because it really is one of those lost, um, you know, record or albums in the Cure's discography. You're right, though, with it being a. Uh, a heavy album and something that commands attention because the second song watching me fall it's over 11 minutes long so like mm -hmm. just by this from the in this years in the in only in the, into the second song and it's like holy crap like this is this album's going to demand or command my attention you know what i mean so and demand yeah. my attention. but uh well, and it was one of those you know when, when cds were coming out where bands had more space to work with than they'd ever had before you know right. the day sets i mean you had the kiss me kiss me kiss me but you know that was a double album that was a lot uh, to work with and you know but in the 90s uh, in the early 2000s uh when bands were putting out records there was really no limit to songs that um you could fit on an album and how long the song could be right i think that's what you see with that album yeah so uh yeah i had to pick a song off there all right, so it looks like we're up to number eight now. All right, so my number eight song is going to be off of the album Faith. It's actually a two for a cassette, but this is a little better uh, image of what the cover looks like. And I'm going with, and it's weird because I thought, uh, you know, you're putting this on your list and probably Cure fans are going to scratch their head going, uh, what? But I'm going with All Cats Are Gray. Uh, all right. It's a, a soft, it, it's a moody track. It's all synthesizer. I don't think there's any guitar on it at all. And, and it's just sort of like a song for a rainy day or a song when you're feeling depressed or just kind of feeling sorry for yourself and you listen to it. And it almost sounds like, you know, if not for Robert Smith's vocal, it could have been an orchestral maneuvers in the dark track mm. because it is just synthesizer, uh, maybe a little bit of bass. Um, there's some piano, like at the end, kind of the coda to the song, but I've always, I, I found it very moving and it's by far my favorite track off of one of my favorite Cure albums. Um, so what is that on the front cover? Do you think? I don't know. You know, it looks like, uh, like a some bug for scope. Cause it's a real like close up image of something. I have no idea what, but I got to and it's almost like if you're looking at something yeah. under a microscope, but I don't know. I might have, have to, to I might have to Google that. Yeah, yeah. Somebody somewhere knows what it is. Okay, so my number eight, we're going poppy here. I'm going from the, for the title track, Boys Don't Cry. I've always loved this song, and I don't think it doesn't appear on three imaginary boys, right? No, it was a single, yeah. Right. And um but here you get that post-punk sound. It's got that bouncy cure rhythm to it. Love the guitar. 
And you can just hear when Robert Smith sings the chorus of Boys Don't Cry, you just heard that uniqueness that he had in his voice. And that's what I, I love about vocalists like Robert Smith. Like, is he the best singer? No. But when you hear him, you know who it is. And um, I think that that's a good thing because it sets them apart from other bands. So you heard that right from the beginning with these guys. And they just had that sound and, and combined with, you know, his, his unique vocals. It just makes for a real interesting track. I just love the song, Boys Don't Cry. I'm actually trying to learn it on guitar, too. It's just one of those songs that never gets old for me. Yeah, and it's very punk. I mean, but it's yeah. punk kind of way. It's not like in your face, rage. It's like it's like punk, like at least we're punk, almost exactly. Yeah, but yeah, that's a great one. Each each track on there um, is is fantastic, um, and they're all just short songs. They're, I think the shortest songs probably that the Cure ever uh, recorded. Um, yeah, but yeah, I could have picked. Yeah five other songs off of this record there's just a lot a lot of good stuff on here so yeah so boys don't yeah i love subway song on there too where it's just sort of like it trails off and you think the song's over and yeah. then there's a scream and you're like holy crap well and then you've got fire in cairo where f-i-r-e-i-n-c-a-i-r-o yeah yeah i learned how to spell with that song <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and, you know, Plastic Passion, Jumping Someone Else's Train. It's just, I might have to listen to this album tonight. This is a great record. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good, and it still holds up today. Yeah. All right. My Number seven. Seven. Um, going back to this one, uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. I'm going with All I Want. Hmm. I love that guitar intro. It's like the most, it's, it's like the sleaziest most aggressive uh, guitar riff intro that The Cure, I think, ever recorded. And, it, you know, after that guitar onslaught at the beginning, then it kind of settles into, we got the keyboards, we got kind of the hypnotic drumming, and you got Robert Smith going on his, you know, uh, emotive vocals. But, I, yeah, that one, and I, I think it on here, it falls right after Just Like Heaven, which mm -hmm. is kind of poppy tune and all the elements that you know the the cure had kind of patented uh in the mid 80s and then you're right all i want it just definitely like breaks the mood uh from you know just like heaven and that's you know the, the cure could really rock pretty hard when they wanted to uh and that's evidence right there i mean they could be really poppy they could be very morose but they could also uh kick your ass when they wanted to well, yeah, because I'm looking at the track listing here. The last song, Fight, that's a pretty heavy song. Yeah, no question. Mm -hmm. So talking about kicking your ass, they're kicking your ass on that song. And Shiver and Shake. Shiver and Shake, yeah. Um, I, love, I love this song. I might have to listen to this tomorrow, too. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be Cure Day. <laughs> I need to get this on vinyl, too. But. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, one I got to get on vinyl, too. Awesome. Well, my number seven, I'm picking um, a song off of Wish, which is one of my favorite Cure records. I really, really like this record. And I'm going to go with the song High. And it happens to be track number two. Just uh, again, I've used these words to describe Cure songs, but this is a dreamy sort of song. It's got a bouncy quality to it. I love the percussion in this song i was listening to it again today it, there's almost like some bells or some chimes in it that kind of ring out throughout the song but you have to really listen they're sort of in the background but that adds to sort of that dreamlike quality to the song and um yeah i just have always really dug this song yeah and it was you know the i think the perfect follow-up to disintegration because they could have gone down that road with disintegration and made the next album even darker right. and even more melancholy more depressing um but they didn't i mean they, they they retained some elements of it but there was enough like okay hey friday i'm in love we're having a little fun here a little more right. back uh, bouncy pop 
but they did CDs and then a track like that. It's just, yeah, it's dreamy is a great description of it because yeah. it's that way. I mean, and it's not anything that, uh, you know, strays too far from disintegration, but it's still, it's got a brighter element like, Hey, we're uh, the dark cloud is gone and we're going to have a little fun. And it's a, a very cool song. Opera yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a great record. Love it. All right, so number six. All right, I am going to the first time, but maybe not the last time, to the Head on the Door album for Night Like This. Nice. And I, I love that intro. I love the intro the same way I love the intro to California Girls, the same way I love the intro to Every Day is Like Sunday by Morrissey. Mm -hmm. It's just got this intro. It has nothing to do with the rest of the song. And it's just a keyboard with a little bit of guitar, but it's effective. It just like puts you in the right mood. And then the drums kick in and it's just, I, I love it. Um, you know, Robert Smith's, you know, I'm coming to find you if it takes you know, it's just a great, I mean, it's so Robert Smith, and yet there's some tension there. And it's what other Cure song has a saxophone solo? I mean, right. it's like, you know, that's different. Right. Uh, but at the same time, it, it works. I can't imagine the song without it. And uh, yeah, I love it. There's, you know, some urgency to the vocals, and it's just got such an atmosphere about it. But I, I love it. I love that track. And I'm going to listen to it as soon as we get done with this video. Yeah, I think tomorrow is going to have to be, I think starting tonight into tomorrow is going to be cure night and cure Saturday, you know. And you'll never get bored. Yeah. No, that's what's great about the cure is they have so many different sounds and different records. That's That was a great choice. All right. So number six, I I, I have to put it in there. Just like heaven. I, I just love this song. I Every time I hear it, it puts me in a good mood. It's bouncy. It's upbeat. It's the cure doing pop songs. It's ageless, too. And I've said this in my videos before, but I've got two kids. My daughter's 16. My son's 14. When I put this song on, they love it. They're singing along to it. They, they put it on their Spotify playlists. You know, they're like, oh, we love that song by The Cure. This might be the only, actually, it's this song and Friday I'm in Love that they love as well. I like Friday I'm in Love too. It didn't make my top 10, but I love that tune. And uh, Just Like Heaven, it was probably, it could have been one of the first Cure songs that I heard. Mm -hmm. um, and it was pop but it had a darker quality to it. That's what I thought was good about The Cure and Unique is they did pop songs, but they were darker pop songs. Um, they were goth pop, if you will. And um, yeah, I never get tired of listening to Just Like Heaven. Well, and there's certain bands where you hear a certain guitar tone or there's some signature sound that they have. And that guitar and that song yeah. is the Nobody else has that guitar tone. And it's interesting because the whole way through the track, it just gets kind of wandering all over the place. It's meandering, like a meandering lead guitar riff. But I love everywhere that it goes. Right. And it's so melodic. It's such a fun song to listen to. It's a great way to kick off uh, what was side two of the cassette, but was really side three of the album, if you own the album. Uh, and it's just a fun track. And it's almost like In Between Days Part Two. Uh, yeah, to me, a lot of that song also. Um, but yeah, great tune. And I love how it just ends where he says, just like heaven. Ding, and then the song is over. Well, I was going to mention that, too, because the song is called Just Like Heaven, but he doesn't say it till the very end. Exactly. And it's like, I just have to look at the lyrics to make sure. But it's like um, Dep Depeche Mode, enjoy the silence. They don't say enjoy the silence until the very, the very end. Right. It's almost like we're listening to a Michael Nesmith song that he's not even saying what the title is, you know? Um, yeah, like Good Clean nice Fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Calico Girlfriend Samba. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It'd be interesting. I, I would love to know what hardcore Cure fans think of Just Like Heaven. I mean, I know it's their pop song. I know it's their big hit. I still have to put it in there, though. 
Yeah, I wonder if Cure fans look at it the way they look at like shiny happy people from REM or some of REM's more poppy you know, kind of stuff that they've come out with. But I love shiny happy people though too. Yeah, well, and I love the B-52s, which is part of the reason why I like yeah. that song a lot too. So, so I'm not going to be the, I'm not going to be scared to put some hits in my list here. Just saying. no. Well, it's what we like, and that's what, you know, Chris and I had talked about before we actually started recording was these are songs that I love to listen to. When I, if I'm going to listen to The Cure and I've only got a half hour, these are songs that I'm going to put on, and this is a playlist I'm going to make on Spotify uh, of my favorite Cure tracks also. Yep. So. All right, so we are up to number five. All right, number five, and I feel bad it took me so long to get to this album, but Dissertation... Own this first on cassette, um, but I'm going to Fascination Street. Nice. Uh, such an apocalyptic track, and I love the bass line on there, which is so cool. I love the guitar work, uh, which is so interesting. Uh, everything about it, the drumming on it, it just creates such an atmosphere of depression and paranoia. There's just something unsettling about the song. And I remember it was the first single, first video um, of this album. And I was expecting more of Just Like Heaven, more of Why Can't I Be You, Hot Hot. I thought like, okay, they're going to go, like that's the road they're going to go down. And then Disintegration comes out and you're like, uh, wow, like what happened? You know, who died? Uh, right. But it's, you know, but Fascination Street is such a great listen. It's such an unusual uh, lead off, you know, song from an album. But, you know, it's all the reasons why uh, Disintegration is one of my favorite Cure albums and a lot of people's favorite Cure album. Um, because it's so cool. Yeah, I mean, this song might be appearing on my list as well. I, I agree with you. I love the bass. Um, it's a heavy song. but It's got it's almost got like a danceable quality to it, too. You can mm -hmm. you can kind of see kids dressed in black, like just sort of, you know, moving to the music. Yeah, right. We should have worn all black today and like, you know, <laughs> eyeliner, eyeliner. And, yeah. And <laughs> but yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing uh, the album Disintegration a lot in this in this top five here. Um, so much so that my number five is coming off of Disintegration. And I'm going with another hit of theirs, Love Song. Uh, again, this, this sort of falls into the same category as Just Like Heaven. I know it was a huge hit for them, but I love this song. It, uh, it's got a kick-ass melody. I just love the, the lyrical line, whenever I'm alone with you, and he just, he just says all of those things that go along with that line. And... You know, as a kid listening to this, you know, you're like this teenager and you're like, yeah, I want to find a girlfriend. And, you know, Robert Smith is singing this song and yeah, I can identify with this. And but it's kind of a cool thing because it's the cure doing a love song. And um, yeah, I just have always dug this song and, and I never get tired of listening to it off of one of my favorite records, Disintegration. Yeah, and there's so many cool moments. I mean, you when you break that song down, you've got the verses, which are kind of very quiet with yep. just the organ, the bass, uh, you know, not much else going on. And then the strings come in. You know, like just a very interesting um, score for that particular, you know, the, the, the strings that they use on that track. And then the big build up with the chorus is great. Uh, but yeah, it's you break down that song and, and really listen to it. And sometimes with these singles, we've heard them so many times, you forget how brilliant they are. But, you know, really kind of listen to it with a fresh set of ears and you realize how creative uh, that track was. Even the lead guitar on it, you know, it's almost got like an acoustic electric acoustic kind of a, uh, you know, but it's, again, it's that guitar tone that The Cure was known for right. uh, about that song, but. What year did this come out, Disintegration? Was it 89 or was it 88? I'm going to say it was 89. Okay. Because what I, my point is, is that 
let's think about the musical climate in 1989. You had a lot of hair metal. Mm -hmm. it was, 1989 was like the pinnacle of like hair metal and thrash and Bon Jovi and that. And then you had The Cure. Mm -hmm. They found a niche. They like kids identified with them, even in the crazy 80s of the the big hair and the makeup. But, you know, I guess the, the Cure did have big hair and mm -hmm. they did wear makeup. It was just sort of a different take on it. But I guess my point is it's interesting that The Cure became so popular in that era. Yeah, well, and I was in college um, and all my roommates were into hair metal and heavy metal. They were into like Faith No More. They were into Guns N' Roses. They were listening right. to Extreme, Poison, all those bands. And yet The Cure was one of the few, that Disintegration was one of the few alternatives, uh, you know, cassettes that they owned back then because everybody, like thought it was cool. And even if you didn't like The Cure, you never listened to The Cure before. You put that album on and you're like, wow, this is actually pretty cool and I dig it. Well, I know The Cure went on to influence a lot of bands. Like there's a band called AFI that they influenced, uh, My Chemical Romance, even uh, Blink-182 off of one of their albums. They do, the, Robert Smith does a guest vocal on one of their albums. So, you know, The Cure went on to influence a lot of bands that didn't sound like The Cure, but they, The Cure was still an influence to them. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, all right, so that's where we are. I guess we're up to number four. Yeah, number four, I'm going to go back to the Faith album for a song called Doubt. Right. And it's really a punk track. It's like the only, you know, song you could kind of consider punk um, off that. But it's just, and it, it segues from the track right before it. Um, there's a, a, a cool segue. It's not like it just starts off clean. Um, I'm forgetting what track was um, before it, but anyway, I can't read because it's a damn cassette. Uh, anyway, you just get right into this crowd. You got this frenetic drumming and uh, great guitar work on it, and it's um, it's fast, it's loud, it's raucous. It's comes out of left field because not really a whole lot from that had sounded i mean primary is kind of a punk track but for me doubt is just cool. i love the guitar tone of the, the cure you know it kind of reminds me of like the guitar you would have heard on the boys don't cry record uh, it's just kind of i don't know it, it's got that uh, i don't know signature punk sound to it but yeah i don't know i love that you know song comes on on faith and kind of not expecting it uh if i haven't listened to that album in a while i'm like oh i love this song this one's great but it's not a lot field but i love it it's a great song and and faith is a great album too because it's one of those it's there's it's a sparse record but there's a lot going on too i feel like it's one of those records every time i listen to it i hear something a little bit different that i'm expecting um it's it's an interesting record that in 17 seconds yeah sort of sister records exactly mm -hmm. um all right well my number four i don't know if we've mentioned the album pornography yet but i'm going with the hanging garden and uh talk about percussion i mean the drums make this song it's just got this rolling rumbling jungle like quality to the to this song um the lyrics, descriptive, haunting. I don't even know exactly what he's singing about, but it's just so cool. It's a heavy song, not in the sense of like fast or guitar heavy, but just the whole rhythmic quality of the song and the lyrical content. It's uh, just a masterpiece. And I think it's, it's one, of the, one of the best songs off of this record. Yeah, no question. And it also appears, um, I think it appears on the Standing on a Beach uh, yep. competition also, which is the first time I heard it. But yeah, this I, I love the album cover on here too, because it almost, it could be like a, you know, a satanic album or something, you know, like. Sam uh, Hain. Yeah, Sam Hain. It could have been a Sam Hain cover easily. But yeah, it, it's a 
album and i think they had pushed this sound as far as they could at the time mm -hmm. um, and then they kind of lightened up a little bit but yeah i love i mean i love this album a lot i love cold uh i love the you know 100 years the first track on here um, i almost so picked uh figurehead yeah you know that one's great siamese twins almost made my list i kind of like nudged it out uh in one yeah. of the more uh the later uh editions of this list that i did but um yeah that's a great album um and it's a dark album too and a heavy album and one of those like your friends who aren't really into the cure and you're trying to you know get them like a, maybe a starting place might be pornography some of your heavy metal fans uh your friends who you want to you know get them to appreciate the cure that might be uh not a bad place to direct them I'm to start it's funny though we had mentioned sam hain um but thinking about sam hain and thinking about the album pornography there's a lot of similarities i wonder if uh glenn danzig was influenced by the cure at all with his sort of goth because sam hain you had the misfits who were punk sam hain was almost more goth like with their sound they were like pre-danzig they were like mm -hmm. the in between the misfits and danzig i almost wonder if they if the cure was an influence for them because uh their albums uh are very similar to pornography yeah i don't know the yeah, no, I, I, I think the cure influenced a lot of bands um yep. to their eras but yeah no I, I i would believe that for sure all right we are up to number three now all right number three this is where uh okay i'm going with a hit I'm going with an easy pick because it's one of their most popular tracks. If you were around in the 80s, I'm going to go, let's go to bed. Off of, uh, it's on this EP. It's also on uh, Japanese Whispers uh, compilation. But yeah, I don't know. There's something about it. I love it. It's so different from pornography. And this was like the next thing to come out. But it's, it's a great early you know new wave post-punk pop track um you know trying to entice somebody into bed okay. of a naughty lyric uh but it was so right for the time you know like college station ate up, college kids ate it up all the goth kids you know like you're nothing cooler nothing cooler if you're around in the 80s and you wanted to impress your girlfriend with the out and like yeah i want to hear uh some cure but yeah i i you know I still I, I still think it's cool i love it did that come out on cd that uh that um tape that you have the cassette tape the cassette tape did not um okay. Japanese, it's on this one so i think i have that on cd i was just wondering if the cassette came if there was a cd version of the cassette i don't think they did because everything on the walk ep is on japanese whispers so i think they just figured like well let's not duplicate it but i, I right. would have if it had come out on yeah CD. that's cool i might have to get that on cassette i don't have that so very cool well my number three i'm not going to say too much about it because we mentioned it but it's fashion fascination street off of disintegration and uh you know just like you had mentioned and i had mentioned before i love the bass line I love the dance quality to it. It's just a heavy song, uh, rhythmic. It's, uh, yeah, it's everything you want in a Cure song. Yeah. That was my number three. Yeah. And I love, I just love when it like quiets down and, dee -dee 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 -dee. Uh, you know, that guitar part is just. So the bass cool. is just. Dun -dun 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 it's just, you want to just bang your head to it. It's a heavy song. Yeah, you want to set something on fire or watch something, or, you know. I think I did something. set something on fire when I was listening to it. Throw something yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're down to number two already. Okay. All right. Number two. Gonna go back to Disintegration. Also, I'm going with Close Down. Um, love nice. that one. I love the tribal drumming. That goes all the way through. I love the keyboards on it. Um, oh, the, the guitar. Again, it's the same guitar tone that they used on Just Like Heaven, but in a 
way, you know, that's the cure right there. That guitar line that runs through, closed down. That's every bit the cure. Um, I, I almost picked pictures of you. And then this track came on right after. And I'm like, I don't know. this is the one, you know, right. it's just that you can listen to uh, when you're just, kind of, you know, you want to relax or you just want to unwind. Just listen to this track. And it's just so melancholy. It's so, uh, I don't know. It, it's just, uh, you know, again, one of those tracks that I love, it puts me in a good mood, even though it's on a depressing album, but yeah, it's it's the cure, man. Well, that's what I love. This is why I love doing these videos is because, you know, we, we've picked um, a couple of the same. Well, I think, well, Fascination Street was a song that we both picked, but I feel mm-hmm. like we're both kind of picking a lot of different songs, which is interesting. So it's, um, you know, it's it, here's a band that we both love, but I think we're coming from, you know, two different eras, so two different areas. So it's like, it's, interesting to see what you pick and what I pick. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll match up. Well, we still got one more. We'll see. Yeah. My number two is off of wish. And I'm going with uh, a letter to Elise. And it, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to use the term beautiful. I don't know if we use the term beautiful when we talk about the cure, but this is a beautiful song. And um, I just love the way it's written. I always wonder who is Elise? Like, was it a girlfriend of his or, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just an interesting idea for a song and the lyrics and melody are just, just beautiful. And um, it comes in at track number nine. So it's towards the end of the album. There's 12 tracks on this record. But it always hits every time I get to that song, it just hits me over the head. It's just, it's just this beautiful song. I just love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so. it, well, I remember hearing that on the radio. That was, I think, like the, the third single off that. Um, I, w- and, I couldn't remember whether they released it as a single or not. Yeah. And it was like a different, each single off that album was so different, you know, yeah. uh, because High and then uh, Friday I'm in Love. And then right. Lee's just like, wow, you know, it's a great for people who were just kind of getting into alternative music. And that was the first Cure music they heard. I mean, it's like, yeah, that's who the Cure are pretty much. Right. Yeah. So, uh, again, like I said, every time I hear it, it just hits me over the head. I just love that tune. And um, that's my number two. All right. All right. Big reveal. Number one. For all the money, all the marbles. Um, yeah, I don't know. Call me a sellout. Call me like whatever. You can start to boo after I uh, announce this one. But um, man, I'm going with In Between Days. Nice. Uh, head on the door. Freaking love that track. Uh, you know, just the the whole build up. Um, do, 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 just uh, you know, don't get me started on it, but it's just like it's like a whirlwind of a song, you know, and um, you know, again, that guitar tone is the same one they use for Just Like Heaven, you know, that's why I say like Just Like Heaven was like the sister song to In Between Days, but right. I love the drumming on it, how boom, boom, and then you get like lead guitar yeah. line and then the, the synthesizers come in robert smith having fun with the vocal um yeah it's a great song know. yeah something about that but i i don't know that's my favorite i've loved it since i heard it and you know. i think it's good that the cure did songs like that i mean they needed to mix it up you know i mean they did have records where every song was brooding and moody and depressing but you know, it's nice to every once in a while have that like sort of jolt of energy and sort of a pop quality to the stuff. So, um, yep. yeah, that's a great song. Well, my is a letter to Elise, and I feel like that's the sister song to my number one. And you had mentioned this song, but I'm going with Pictures of You as my number one. Uh, I think it was actually used in the commercial, too. But um, it's. It's another, and I, I had mentioned my kids before. Pictures of You is another song my kids like as well. Um, I can just picture Robert Smith just sitting on the ground looking through an old photo album and just 
reminiscing and um you know it's it, the song could be about losing somebody the song could be about you know thinking back to when your relationship was different with somebody uh there's a lot of different takes on the song but it's a song that i identify with and i know a, a lot of other people could identify with as well and it's again i'm going to use the term beautiful it's a beautiful song uh robert smith does some great vocals on it I love the layered sound in this album. I love the layered sound in that song. And it's become, uh, it's become sort of a signature song for The Cure, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's not in a hurry to get anywhere. You know, it's one of those songs that takes its time. Like, it's yeah. a long time before Robert Smith's vocal even comes in. You're like, is this an instrumental? Are we going to get any right. vocals here? It's just like, I'm, we're just taking our time. We're, you know, setting the stage. We're gonna repeat, uh, you know, the the same, uh, you know, opening, whatever you want to call it. But we're just gonna take our time with it, and then you get into the vocals, and then there's an instrumental section, and then. But it's just like, you know, I, I love the fact it's just kind of got like a, you know, I mean, the lyrics are profound, but as far as instrumental goes, this is kind of like, you know, a lazy riverboat ride, like we're, you know. We're not in a hurry. Hope you're not in a hurry. Hope you got nothing, no plans, nothing to do, because this song's going to go on for a while, you know. But that's the whole, that's what I love about it is, you know, they're not trying to, to make it concise. They're like, okay, we're, uh, we, we have a palette here and right. we're picture and uh, come along for the ride. And, but it's just, it's almost the, the beginning. It's almost, you know, hypnotic yep. the beginning to it because you get into that rhythm and you're listening to it. And then, you know, Robert Smith has a very quiet vocal. He's not like jumping out, like, here's a vocal and blah. Right. You know, right. it suits the lyrics so well. And I, I think that's what's so great about it is it's everything great about The Cure. Um, you know, they said they establish a mood, then the vocals come in, you got the profound lyrics, and then throw in some instrumental flourishes, and then it kind of, you know, fades yeah. off sunset but it's a great great track uh like i said now i feel like feel shitty that i didn't have it on my list but it was it was there i'm telling you like right. it, you know it so cool. it's just it's always been my favorite cure song i love like i've been looking so long at these pictures of you that i almost believe that they're real like mm -hmm. that's just that's quite the line right there um because you can just if you if anybody has lost somebody before and you start looking through pictures, you just, it's, you can close your eyes and that person is there right next to you again. So it's, it's just, uh, yeah, I just identify with the song. It's, it's, I love the build up to it. I love the sort of uh, melancholy lyrics and vocal quality and the understated vocals. And um, yeah, you said it, I think you said hypnotic. It's a, it's a hypnotic song. It just gets you in this, vibe and it just you're there for the whole song yeah absolutely um now you know we've done our list what is your favorite cure album i uh, i'd probably have to say disintegration yeah yeah without a doubt i mean you know pictures of you love song lullaby fascination street prayers for rain the same deep water as you, the, the title track. I mean, everything off the record is so good. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to say Disintegration. What about you? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, and I, I, I took some shit for this because I, uh, you know, I did a Cure uh, album ranking and my number one was Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me because for me, that's like the Cure's white album. You yeah. got everything the Cure does well on there. You like the brooding stuff, got the you like the poppy stuff, got that. You like yeah. the aggressive stuff, got that too. And we're going to throw some stuff on here that you've never heard before either. So that would be my number one. And maybe that's not fair because it's like a double album, but I'm sticking with it. And then Disintegration would be my number two. Yeah, and I think we're just flip-flopped. I would pick Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me as my number two. You know, the song I almost put on off of this is uh, Catch. Yeah. I love that tune. I wanted to put it on there so bad. Yeah, and I love that line. You know, I sometimes used to try to catch her, but never even caught her name. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, I agree. This is a great album. That, that's a good analogy. This is their white album. Mm-hmm. But um, well, that was interesting. Well, so did we only have one song that was the same? I think Fascination Street, right? I think you're right. Yeah. So that's crazy. Out of all ten songs, we only had one that matched. But that just shows how rich and how uh, extensive the Curious discography is. That they're right. one. Like I wanted to put close to me. I love close to me. That makes. Yeah, I almost fun. put that on too. Yeah, I mean, I love. Um, I love the Caterpillar. I almost put that on. Yeah, Caterpillar. Like I didn't have a single song from the top, which is not to say that you know I, I don't like that song because. Um, you know, flicka, 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 flicka. yeah, uh, you know, prayers for rain. I love that song. That, yeah. uh, almost made it. Um, and yeah, I didn't have a first album, which I, I regret because you know, ten fifteen Saturday night. I like that one. Um, yeah, yeah, many great tracks. Like you had listed them all off. I'm like, yeah, those are all uh, yeah. great. Um, well, that's why I had to pick Boys Don't Cry. I love that song. I almost, I wanted to put Killing an Arab on here too. Yeah, that's another cool one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, we could have done a top 30, top 40 of The Cure, you know? Oh yeah, easily. That would have been a lot of fun too. But. Yeah. But, all right, well, this was fun. And um, anybody watching, let us know what you think. Um, what are your top 10 Cure songs? What's your what's your top cure record? And uh, I wanted to thank Jeff for being on the video with me. And we're uh, you know you're probably gonna see us next Thursday with the rest of the gang. But uh, this was just a a twofer, if you will. <laughs> but like the old days when we were yeah, doing it's our, like the, our Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's going back to the old days now, which is. Uh, it keeps things interesting, but um, all right, everyone, we'll have a good one, and we will see you on YouTube. Good night. Good night.